restore your trust and open your heart to love again. That's what we're talking about in this video. This is Dr. Melissa. I'm a trauma expert and top doctor. And in this video, I have the pleasure of talking to Jennifer Zundel. She is a certified conscious uncoupling coach, supporting those going through a breakup or divorce to heal their hearts, to reclaim your power, to create the happiness you desire in your relationships. And she's a certified calling in the one coach, supporting singles to identify and release the hidden inner obstacles that have been keeping love away so that you can finally manifest manifest soulmate love. Thank you so much for being here. It's an honor. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk with you today. This is awesome. I, I, I love that you're here. And I would love to start out by asking you, you know, conscious uncoupling breakups and calling in the one seem kind of like opposites. Um, how, how do you, connect or bridge that gap or, or what made you choose to do both? I know it's a really interesting thing because you would think that they're opposites, but in some way they're very similar. The similarity is that both groups of people, whether you're going through a breakup with a relationship that didn't work, or whether you're struggling to find love, the common problem is that there are re relationship issues, that that person is struggling to create happy, healthy relationships. And so they're really two sides of the same coin. They're basically the same conversation, just in different environments. And the solution for both of them is actually the same. So I'm really excited to share a little bit more with you today about that. Oh, that's awesome. I would love to hear more about that. So, we're going to talk about on this call, we're going to talk about three things for sure, what it takes to restore trust after experiencing heartbreak, how to reclaim your power to create healthy, happy love. And the number one key that you found to liberating yourself from the patterns of your past. And I'm sure we'll talk about lots more. Um, but let's start by talking about restoring trust after experiencing heartbreak. Absolutely. It's so important because what happens a lot of times when people go through a breakup is that they close their heart down. They're afraid of re getting hurt again. They're afraid of repeating the same dynamics. And so they start to close themselves off. And this leads to them leading a lesser life, less less than what's absolutely possible for you, less than what your heart truly desires, because you've just decided I don't want to go through anything like that again. And so also what happens is when, when people are getting stuck in a breakup, the way, the things that lead them to get stuck in a breakup is that they find themselves blaming their partner. They find themselves, um, you know, not really looking at their part in things because it's painful to do that. And so they're also under the misconception that time is going to take care of this. You know, time is going to heal this. If I just get through this period, then things will be better. And so this also causes them to be stuck because the reality is that time doesn't heal everything. We actually sometimes need professional support to heal things. If you broke your leg, you'd go to a doctor. You wouldn't just sit at home and heal it yourself. <laughs> which is what a lot of people do when they go through a breakup. And so we actually have to start to wake up to the reality that this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity like no other time in your life where you have the opportunity now to see some things differently, to wake up to what you've, the cycle maybe that you've been in, the pattern that you've been in, and to see what were the choice points that led to this happening where might you make new choices and to really release some of what I call love blocks that have been causing these problems for you, causing the cycle for you of getting into these relationships, because it's probably not the first time that you've experienced this kind of heart pain. And we want to see what's causing it so that you can make new choices and get unstuck, break free from your past, break free from the dynamics that you have found yourself inside of so that this really does become an opportunity for an awakening and doing things differently. Your next relationship doesn't start when you meet your next person. 
but with how you end a, a breakup. That, that's when the next relationship starts, with how you go through ending that one. So this is the bridge to then finding your love, finding your soulmate. And I'm curious because as you know, my focus is on victims of narcissistic abuse. And so in terms of, there's not necessarily a, a uncoupling process that, that they can go through because it's entirely one-sided. The, the narcissist yeah. is not necessarily willing to work on the relationship. But I think if I understand what you're saying about the patterns, it's, it speaks very much to the things that I I talked to my community about as well, that there were behaviors or attitudes or beliefs that led you to not see red flags or to stay in a relationship that you knew was harmful and healing those things are paramount to creating that next relationship. Absolutely. And, you know, I, as you mentioned, I'm a conscious uncoupling coach and it's a misconception in some ways that people think that they could do that program with their partner. It's actually a program for individuals. And so it's wonderful if your partner wants to do it with you, but it doesn't need to be that way because really what we're doing is we're looking at ourselves here in the program. We're looking at how am I the source of what I've been experiencing. And like you were saying, these beliefs that I've, I've had you know, maybe I was aware of them, maybe I wasn't aware of them, but what is the belief system that I've been in that has been generating my outer reality and how can I make it conscious and start to shift it where I'm centered so that I can show up in new ways that are in alignment with what I want, that are in alignment with what's really possible for me. Oh, that's beautiful. That's awesome. So I'm curious when someone's experienced a heartbreak in their relationship, where do they get stuck when they try to get back into dating again? If they haven't, uh, you know, started that next relationship with a, a good solid end to the previous one. Right. Well, that is one of the ways that they get stuck is they haven't had a good solid end to the previous one. And they're thinking that, I'll just be more mindful next time. Or, you know, they think maybe it was just that one person when in really it's part of a larger pattern. And so we do need to see how is that one relationship part of a larger pattern and let's actually break the pattern. Let's free ourselves from that pattern. And, and, you know, we, the key to opening your heart and, and trusting yourself to love again is to really see your own part, to see how you, made choices that led to that dynamic. What, what did you contribute to that? Even if it's, you know, I especially know that in your community, you work a lot with narcissists and it might be very easy to see how the other person is responsible for so many awful things, but yet the harder thing is to look at our part, right? And so even if it's clearly 97% the other person's fault, we need to see what was our part what was our 3% in this dynamic and put all of our attention there. That's where 100% of our attention needs to be on what did we contribute to that dynamic? Because that's how you can reclaim your power. That's how you can restore your trust in yourself. And that's how you can guarantee that you're going to create a different future. And the key here, especially regarding trust, because I know, you know, that you, are, are interested in, in it, how to restore trust, but the most important person to restore trust with is yourself. That's a hundred percent true. Trusting that you are, that you can trust yourself to not repeat the same patterns again, that you will see the red flags, pay attention to the red flags, not overlook the red flags, that you're going to speak up about the things that matter, that you're going to trust your intuition. And so we have to restore that trust with ourselves. And the way that that happens is to be very curious about what my part was. Be very curious, even if it seems small. And so what would that look like? You know, where did I overlook my red the red flags? And where did I ignore my intuition? And where did I not set boundaries? Where did I not speak up for myself? Where was I overgiving, overfunctioning, putting their feelings and needs and desires before my own? 
where did I do those things? Where were the choice points that I made a choice that led us down a certain path rather than a different choice? Because once you see the choice points, then you know what you can do differently in the future, right? So we have to identify what were those choice points so I can make new choices in my future. And I think what you're saying is so huge. And it's something that that I say as well, um, often, because I think so often when someone has been a victim of narcissistic abuse, you know, there's, there's nothing that makes the abuse okay. And this, what you're saying is not about victim shaming at all. It doesn't negate or diminish what the narcissist did, uh, the way they were abusive in the relationship. And you're, I, I mean, I so totally agree whether whether your part is 3% or 0.3% or whatever it is, looking at that, realizing where was I people pleasing? Where was I trusting someone else over trusting myself? Yeah. Where, where was I um, misled, you know, yeah. believing an obvious lie? <laughs> <laughs> um, because I wanted it to be true. Those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. That's just huge. And that's where really all of the power is. Um, because the reality is you're not going to change the narcissist. Right. And, and it's not about staying in a relationship with the narcissist either, but what can you heal in yourself? So you don't get into a relationship with another one. Right. We want the end. We want to end the pattern here right? This is the last time you want to ever experience that kind of heart pain so that in the future, you're going to be attracting and getting into relationships and ideally your soulmate relationship with someone who is available for a happy, healthy relationship, someone who is ready to meet you there and, and to honor you, to make you a priority and show up for you in a healthy way. Oh, yeah. That's, that's awesome. What would you say is the most important thing someone can do to create that healthy relationship moving forward, especially if they don't know what a healthy, loving relationship looks like? Yeah. So, you know, we were talking a minute ago about um, overlooking red flags, like, like the things that if we're looking at our part, you know, how did we contribute to that dynamic? Even if it seems very subtle and very small and minor, we maybe overlooked red flags. We were people pleasing. We weren't setting appropriate boundaries. The important thing, the most important thing you can do is to see what was motivating you to do those things. What, what was motivating you to people, please? What was motivating you to overlook the red flags? What was motivating you to make them a bigger priority than your own feelings and needs and desires in this situation. And probably what was motivating you is what we call either in the, in the conscious uncoupling program, we call it your source fracture story, or in the calling in the one program, we call it your false love identity. It's really the same thing. And what it is, is it's the beliefs that you have about yourself, the beliefs you have about other people and how they feel about being in relationship with you, your beliefs about life, your beliefs about love, your beliefs about marriage. So it's a whole matrix of belief system. And it's, it's what's driving you to make unhealthy choices that you probably on some level know aren't in your best interest. And yet possibly you think this is the only way I can have love. I need to prove how worthy I am because I fear they're going to leave me. They're not going to choose me. And I need to show them how great I would be if they just show, you know, um, would choose me or how can I get them to not leave me? And I would be, it would be awful if they left me. I'm so afraid of being alone. And these are beliefs. That's a whole belief system that actually lives in the body at the energetic level of the body. And so we have to shift this. This is, this is a false story that we're inside of, and it gets triggered when we're feeling nervous, when we're feeling anxious, when we're feeling insecure, it gets triggered and we need to shift it so that you're actually centered 
in a deeper truth, in what's really true about who you are, in your true love identity, so that you can start to show up and take actions and make choices and, and behave in ways that are in alignment with who you truly are and what's really truly possible for you, because that's how you're going to attract people who are actually good for you. That's how you're going to choose people who are good for you. That's how you're going to show up in ways that it's natural for you to set healthy boundaries and be a magnet for your soulmate and be, that's where things become easy and effortless and it becomes fun to date and it becomes natural for you to show up in healthy ways. So that's the most important thing someone can do to create happy, healthy love especially if they have a past of difficult relationships is to learn how to shift centers into that true love identity. Oh, I love that. You know, one of the things that I see so commonly is people who want to heal their broken heart by just getting into a new relationship. Hmm. And there's not even necessarily a, a large amount of discernment about who that person is or whether or not they're a good fit, whether whether there's someone that you'd want to have a relationship with, it's kind of more of this, you know, well, this person wants to be with me and I don't want to be alone because I don't want to think about the heartbreak. So I'll, I'll do this. And then it, it really almost always, I, I don't know how often it could possibly be that I see a situation where it's not ending in another heartbreak. Um, yeah, sometimes worse than the first one. So one of the things that you mentioned about attracting or being an attractor to uh, a healthy relationship after doing your own healing, I think is so powerful. Because mm -hmm. the reality is when, when someone is energetically sitting in that place of feeling like they're not enough, or they're bad, or they're wrong, or they're unlovable, or whatnot, they're not going to attract in a very um, evolved, uh, conscious right. relationship right. are almost a repellent because like attracts like. So, right. so that- it's the key for manifesting, right? Yeah, so that, that piece of, of, you know, really making yourself the person you would want to date, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether that's someone mm -hmm. who's very honest or very compassionate or yeah. someone who has a healthy self-esteem and is secure in who they are, all mm -hmm. of those kind of things are going yeah. to be that much more magnetic to that person that you want to bring yes. in. Well, exactly. And these are things that we work on in the calling in the one work and the material in the program, right? Because it really is two conversations in the calling in the one program. One conversation is about cleaning up our past patterns and our past dynamics and releasing the past um, love blocks, right? Cleaning that up. And the other side of the conversation is the fun manifesting side where we get to actually, um, you know, really get clarity about our soulmate and who is that and, and have some of the practices where we're thinking about visioning and we're thinking about, um, how to raise our vibration and be in alignment with the intention, with, with the desire that we have for love and preparing for that love and really stepping into our full potential and our purpose in life and living our best life. Really, that's like that manifesting side of the conversation. And so it really gets to be a fun conversation. And, you know, I'll share that this is one of the, um, um, misconceptions, one of the mistakes that I see people making who are really interested in manifesting in the law of attraction is they think that they can just jump to the fun manifesting practices. They can just, you know, say affirmations or meditate on their couch or think happy thoughts and that that's how they're going to manifest their person. But they haven't actually realized that you have to do the work of releasing the patterns of your past of actually looking at was what was driving those poor choices in the past and clean that up because you can't manifest happy healthy love on top of a belief that you don't deserve happy healthy love that's so true that's yeah true. yeah yeah it's it's one of those things i find that 
oftentimes there's an element and I can tell you for sure I've experienced this myself as well this desire to be saved almost like a desire to be mm. recognized as being a, a good person worthy of love like if only the right person comes along that that sees that or if only the right person you know I don't know, like could see who I really am, then I could just have this healthy relationship. But what what you're describing is kind of the way I describe, you know, trauma frequently is like, it's like mud on the windshield, you, the person can't see you until you've removed those blocks, the, the mm -hmm. beliefs that are standing in the way. Yeah, your soulmate won't even recognize you. Right. Your soulmate won't recognize you if you are stuck in those those love blocks, the, the 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 trauma bond, the patterns of your past. And what you're talking about here is what I call soulmate myths, right? Where people have this myth that one day I will just magically run into my person and they'll recognize me and I'll recognize them. And since that hasn't happened yet, I guess I haven't met my person. When the reality is, is that you actually need to prepare. You actually need to release these love blocks. You need to um, transform this pattern that you've been running, the loop that you've been running inside of in order for your soulmate to recognize you. It's not just going to happen by magic and miracles without you having shifted that. That's a myth right? It actually, you actually have to do some of this inner reflection and shifting and releasing in order for your soulmate to recognize you, right? Absolutely. That's huge. Now, I think if I remember correctly, you told me that you have a love manifestation meditation. Yes, I have a manifest your soulmate meditation. And it's a free gift that I'm offering your community. Oh, and awesome. I have had many people tell me that they have really loved it. I have people that have told me they would follow me anywhere for my meditation. So I'm really honored to be able to share this free gift with your community. Oh, thank you so much. We'll be sure to have that link in the description so that everyone can download it and benefit from, from your meditation. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and for being with us here today. Thank you so much, Melissa. It's been an honor.